All right. Hey, everyone. It is Wednesday, Healing Wednesday. We are now live on Facebook. Hey, cousins. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Come on in. And when you come in, make sure you say hello. Make sure you get in the comments and let us know where you're watching from on this Wednesday. Also, if you're watching this on replay, hashtag replay, um, so we can let so we can see who's all with us. I want to introduce myself. It is Wednesday. I am Amber, aka Watch Amber, the Confidence Queen. Herpes saved my life. Um, I've been called to help women feel unashamed, empowered, and worthy, and I'm using my real life experiences to do so. I'm also the co-founder of the Herpes Can Never Movement. Um, I'm a certified life coach. I'm an entrepreneur, and we're so happy to have you here on Healing Wednesdays. Shayna on TT duties this morning <laughs> nephew <laughs> is snapping this morning okay girl look at her face you can't hit my beefing right now we still <laughs> like each other right now i think i'm on his side <laughs> <laughs> just, girl. just because of my walked outside to take the trash out so me and him are not friends Anyway, oh my god! <laughs> my name is Shannon, <laughs> aka the Happy Goddess, and yes, having me is a big flex. I am the founder of the, I am the founder of Herpes Connector, growing the largest women's awareness community of over 230k. Our mission is to make everyone feel uncomfortable until the herpes community feels comfortable being open about their status and proud of their sexuality. What's your attitude? <laughs> I added twos on 10 million this morning. It ain't even nine o'clock, y'all. Okay, so today's Healing Wednesdays. We came over from Clubhouse and we brought this to Facebook to our cousins because we wanted to engage with you more. We wanted to see our Android cousins. Um, and we all know that we find out you have herpes. It's a different experience for us each, but it's also so many similarities that we share. And one of the things I think we all had to do was go on, Shana and myself, Euphoria, what we had to do was go on a journey of healing for ourselves. And so that's why we wanted to make it an integral part of our week was to focus a day all around healing, all around things that would bring healing to our spirits, healing to our minds, healing to our bodies. And um, that's why we did this today. We are on instagram live tonight at 7 p.m so if you can't catch us fully over here join us on instagram tonight at 7 we go live as herpes can never and you don't want to miss that um shana so what's the plans for today we is do we is euphoria coming in it doesn't look like she's on the she's in the zoom just yet so fine fine so okay we pass in breath work and we go right straight into um affirmations this morning so um, I'm going to do some off the dome, top of the head. That's what this today seems like, a you know, because off um, the dome. I didn't have any affirmations prepared for you all. And I didn't say my affirmations today. So I guess I'm just going to go ahead and say my affirmations for the day. Um, I am a queen. I am magic. I am royalty. I am capable of doing whatever I put my mind to. My dreams are never far-fetched and I can accomplish every single last one of them. My purpose is my power. My spirit is love. I, I'm an energy cleanser. Um, friend, I'm worthy, I'm valued, I'm loved. Yes. And yes. I'm here for DD. Sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Upstairs, Milton, go. It's Amber. We're on the line. So, so just, just okay. make this you. Everyone, I was on. Baby. I was on TT duty as well. Lord, TT duty as well. If anyone's yeah. wondering who the random baby is, that random baby <laughs> is my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> and we have four people watching, so they might actually be. Y'all, get in the comments and let us know where you're watching from. Thank you. That random baby is her nephew. Who's a freaking <laughs> doll baby? I cannot. Thank you, how precious. <laughs> oh, you on Facebook Woo! right now? Looking at the question. I am. I'm on Facebook Live right now. Okay. Um, let me turn this down. Yes. So I could see the con oh, Quan is here. She said, Hey Amber. Hey Shayna. He's so cute. Pamela says, Buenos dias. Okay. We see what's happening. Rich and divine rising. 
Um, last night. So about it. Let's talk about last night because that was that was clutch. Like I feel like that's what we should talk about today. This should just carry over. It's perfect. So we're on the same page. Quan is from Jackson, Mississippi. She's tag- tapping in. Looks like we have Z Chanel who's also watching. Hey Queens, thank you guys for being here. All right, Shana, let's go. Okay, so last night was so good. We turned our own Patreon meeting into our debut YouTube um, video. Only because we had a mouthful to say it was a word and it needs to go viral. So yes, Herpes community, we need y'all to help us get this message go viral. Um, I want to abolish STD contraction laws. That is Mm. a goal. That is a goal for my lifetime. They have to be, we have to be done with charging people with lifelong STDs for not having the conversation that everyone should be having. There shouldn't be penalties on people living with lifelong STDs. There should be penalties on everyone. And that penalty is an STD. You should be having the necessary Mm. conversations. You should be requiring to see your partner's STD results. If you have not been molested, raped, or had your STD as a child, it is your fault that you have an STD if you did not physically see their STI results before having sex with them. And if you did not schedule routine testing with your partners afterwards, point blank period. Amber? (gasps) Who's ready for that level of accountability? Who's ready for that level of awareness? Who's ready for that level of realness? So I feel like it's so crazy because a lot of people in the community who have herpes are looking to punish take or literally take legal action against the person who gave them st gave them herpes and i feel like that will trigger a lot of people in our own community because they're like how are you going to take away something that's meant to protect us but in a way it literally does bind us and bound us um to this responsibility or obligation that now we hold because we have the std so it's literally this never-ending cycle and it needs to be broken and i feel like that takes another level of like vision, awareness, uh, aware, self-awareness to be able to even think about that being okay. Cause a lot of people will be like, nah, that, that w- that's my only revenge. That's my only get back. That's my only protection, but it, it literally is not protecting us at all. It doesn't protect us. Not even a little bit. What it does it. It fuels the stigma. We put in penalties on people who decided to be human and have sex. You're putting penalties yeah. on people who will probably raped or molested penalties on people who probably had a virus since they were children this is oppression those laws that's oppression this is a prime mm. example of oppression of a community of people yes i understand mm. you want to be able to 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 sue but it puts you in in that victim it makes you a victim in a way yeah. not in a way all the way a hundred percent because you never take accountability for your own actions just as much as your partner was supposed to have that conversation with you, you were supposed to have that conversation with your partner as well. You both decided not to have that conversation and yet only one person is, is punished for the decision. Mm. Let me I tell y'all. There. And I think- I because, told Shana. Sorry. Go, go ahead, ahead, Queen, go ahead. And I think because of STD contraction laws is why- we have this stigma. You know what I'm saying? It's why we have that pressure when we want to go disclosing because it's like, oh my gosh, this is not something that's the norm. This is not something everyone does. And it's hard for people, especially living with the ST, lifelong STD, to have that conversation. People without STDs are not even having that conversation. And yet you expect the people living with the virus, living under the stigma to have that conversation or they can go to jail or they can, you know, it can be a misdemeanor or it can be as, as far as death penalty mm. at HIV. And it's not right. It's not freaking fair because the ones spreading the virus are the people who don't know what they have, the people who don't require to see STI results before having sex, the people who don't know how to read their sexual health records, the people who don't ask the doctor what exactly they're getting tested for. Those are the people we need to worry about. Those are the people we need to stigmatize. And those are the people that need penalties, not the people living with life with viruses. I told Shana last night, 
facts. We got a real talk from Quana in the comments. We got a facts from Pamela in the comments. So they're definitely feeling it. I told Shayna last night, y'all, that um, before herpes, I had never had the sex talk with anybody. Before herpes, I had never sat down and talked with someone about my sexual past, my sexual experiences, my... Uh, history with STIs ever. I saw them last night. I had chlamydia before, but I've never told a partner that, you know, I've, I've never, besides the person who gave it to me or we should, my boy, my boyfriend, like in our, inside of our relationship, but it's like herpes forced me to have become that aware to where it's like, this has been wrong all along. I've been doing it, hustling backwards this whole time. I should have been having this conversation in the beginning and my, and the outcomes would have been, could have been different. So it's like, are you ready to deal with the fact that the person who gave you herpes, most of us say, we didn't know, they didn't tell us, but did we ask, did we talk about our status? Did we have that conversation before we ended up in the bedroom? Whether it's a casual fling, whether it's a serious committed relationship, did you have that conversation? And if we're being honest, for most of us, the answer is no. For me, the answer was no. So I had to accept the fact that taking responsibility for my actions or inactions in my past allowed me to realize like, okay, it's way less about anybody else and more about me and what I have not been requiring. Because I told them, I was like, I didn't even have the confidence to even feel comfortable to bring something up because I didn't feel like, I feel like I might get laughed at. I might get like side-eyed or they might be like, oh yeah, you're so weird for having this conversation. But it wouldn't be weird if I just let you inside my body without any prior conversation. That's not weird. It's weird to talk about it for me, but it ain't weird just to do it. Like, so it's all literally set up for us to be in this cycle. And that's another reason why the stigma has to be broken because right along with the stigma being broken, it's all these other sub, these other things that are attached to feeling the stigma, like having there be punishable laws against people who have STDs for not disclosing when the person would have willingly participated in sex with that person prior to that conversation. Woo, we got Daisy said, hey, I caught y'all live. She said, right. Krishanda said, watching from Mississippi, everybody should be talking about it. They're childish if they can't. Hello. We got people sharing comment. We see on the comments. Thank y'all. Make sure y'all letting us know where y'all coming from. Are y'all feeling this conversation? Can y'all relate? Do y'all agree? What's y'all's real thoughts? Have you guys had the conversation about sex prior to having sex with somebody before herpes? Or did herpes force you to pull that mirror up and be like, there's probably some work I could have been doing too. Uh, there's, there's some things I'm responsible for too, in addition to the other person who I'm blaming uh, as the one who gave me herpes. So let's just try to get that real on this Healing Wednesday. I, you hear a lot in the community of people saying, um, they... Um, intentionally gave me herpes they yeah. did it on purpose they, da, 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 da. it's always them 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 just again i'm gonna keep stressing this as much as they didn't have the conversation you didn't have the conversation what makes you feel like you're better than this person just because you don't have a lifelong std that doesn't make you better than that person. That don't make you higher the fact that you also now that you don't have the STD, you don't have to have the necessary conversation. But this person over here with what the STD has to have the necessary conversation. And if you don't and you get an STD because of your you being irresponsible and not requiring to see STD results, it's that person's fault. No, you're just as wrong as that person. Let's talk about it. They should have had the, the person living with a lifelong STD should have had the conversation and the person living without should have had the conversation. You are both just as much as his fault. So we got to stop playing the blame game. If we get rid of the contraction laws, it puts the mm. responsibility on everybody. Now people- Say it again, Shana. If we get rid of the STD contraction laws, it puts the responsibility on everyone. We have this false yeah. sense of security. We're just going to have sex off of the vibes. The vibes is nice. I trust the energy in the room. So I'm going to have sex with them. And I know because they can get locked up for not disclosing to me that if they're not telling me anything, they must be good. No, that's why. I I'm protected. I'm, I'm, I'm protected. What is that? No. You need to be requiring to see STD results. Because the truth of the matter is that conversation is hard. 
It's hard for people yeah. living with lifelong viruses to have. And there's people out here, and because it's hard, that won't tell you. That's the truth of the matter. There's people out here that won't tell you they have an STD, which is why it's necessary for you to bring the conversation up. There's a lot of people out mm. here that got STDs while being in marriages, while being in relationships. That I'm, I'm with my spouse, my man, my girl will never cheat on me. Boom, STD. No, in your relationship, y'all should be scheduling routine STD testing with each other. That's how you hold each other accountable. That's how you switch. I'm taking that into my next relationship, thanks to Shayna. I'm taking that into my relaxed relationship. Any other relationship, thanks to Shayna. We are getting routine testing for life. Yeah, we might be married in our marriage forever, routine testing, because that breaks the stigma. That helps even more make the, 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 the sex talk or conversation that much more normalized when we're doing this on a routine basis like we should be doing anyway. Okay, let's go back up. We got some comments. Daisy says, seeing people near me experience the reality of it all kept me aware and made me have the conversation. She said, I respect anyone who's willing to have the conversation. Thank you, Daisy. Then we have Z. She says, before herpes, I made it a requirement for myself to get tested, but I didn't require it always from my partner. Now I'm aware and more confident and ready to have those conversations. That's what Z says. So Z, great. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Okay. It's also yes. good to have that have those scheduled routine testing with your spouse, especially if you have children. You're changing the narrative. You're breaking generational <clears throat> curses. You're showing your children something different. That's gonna become your children's normal. Do you understand yes. how changing that is for your bloodline, for your family, <clears throat> for your great-great-grandchildren? You're changing that. Sex is a necessary conversation. I was just saying, we see everything about sex mainstream all the time, but we never hear about the people living with the lifelong viruses. We hear, sorry, that's my sister yelling at my nephew right there. <laughs> <laughs> Real life going on in here. <laughs> but, you know, we, we see representation of everything nowadays on TV. We see the LBGTQ and I think I'm messing a letter, but we see, we see that community. We see black and white now. When I was a little girl, we didn't see a lot of um, black girls and black men and black children on television. We're starting to see that a lot more now. Um, but one thing we don't see are people living with lifelong viruses. Yeah. We hear about everybody else likes to <clears throat> and for some reason sex is so mainstream and yet this whole portion of people are deleted. Yeah. They're pushed in the corner, they're stigmatized for knowing their status, and then there's yep. sections put on them. Yep. HIV. If you don't tell somebody that you have HIV, you're gonna go to jail for life. How about somebody asking them this asking them their sex health history first? How about that? It's yeah. Fair. And this is why there's a stigma, and this is why it's so strong, and this is why people are depressed. Because you're punishing people for things that they probably couldn't help. You're human. We have sex. You can get herpes without having sex. You can get HIV without having sex. Life fucking happens. And if you ever had chlamydia, if you ever had gonorrhea, if you ever had if you ever had an STD that is curable, that could have easily been your herpes or your HIV. So you are no better than that person. Yep. Facts. Drop mics. I love it. Daisy says, I went to get tested and asked for the herpes test after watching your content and learning they aren't included in regular screening. She's been married for six years and they still get tested. I'm making it normal for the generation under me, which that, I mean, I never saw my mom get an STD test. I ain't never seen, I don't know anybody in my family who's gotten an STD test outside of myself or my siblings because we talk about it, but just think about how much more comfortable I would have been feeling about talking about sex, talking about STIs if I saw that coming up, if I saw that example and that normalized in my home instead of shamed and silenced, like, like it's so, like it is everywhere else. So just think about the fact that your decision to do the healing now, your decision to come to this level of self-awareness and face the, face how 
where you are in life is the direct relationship, direct relation to the decisions that you've made. If you come to that level of awareness and acceptance, how you can show your children, you can show anybody who's even looking at you that despite it all, the good, bad, the things I, you know, wish I could have done or didn't do or did do, like, this is how you handle it. This is how you heal from it is you acknowledge it. You acknowledge your part in it and you do better and you do different. And that's how we change the generations. And that's how we the stigma. Accepting. I fully accept myself and my herpes. Can you say the same for yourself? If so, why not? Everybody needs our, everybody needs our trigger journal. Look. <laughs> Everybody needs to call our journal, y'all. We wrote a, we wrote to a share book. Live. I'm about to share a live into the group because I didn't do that today. Yes, please. Everybody needs that journal because these are the questions that we ask. Um, that's the deep level of work that you got to be willing to do in, in order to make those changes that last. Looks like Lakeisha says, good morning, queens. Hey, queen. Thank you so much for being here. Rich and divine rising queen. We never mourning. So we not we yes. don't keep that into our lives. <laughs> Pamela <laughs> dropped the mic in the comments. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Queen, we, we see you. Lauren says she just ordered her journal. Thank you, Queen. We can't okay. wait till you get it in. It's gonna be lit. I wish I had it in front of me. I had I have it at home on my nightstand. Woo. We about to ruffle some feathers. We are definitely about to ruffle some feathers. And I know what we're trying to do and trying to break the stigma. We're going to have people who love us or hate us. We're not going to have no in-betweens. And yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, me and Amber, we're going to trigger you because we want you to heal. We want to raise awareness. We want to show you your triggers so that you can learn how to work through your triggers. Change how you feel about your triggers. Change how you react to your triggers. It's necessary because we think it's the herpes, but it's never the herpes. It's everything else and herpes is just bringing your true feelings to the surface um i was having a conversation and the lady was talking about how judgmental doctors can be when you're finding out you have herpes and what my mm -hmm. response was um doctors know that herpes is like your common cold so when mm -hmm. doctors are communicating with you they're talking about talking about herpes as if it's nothing because it's nothing and we're mm -hmm. the people who make it something. Again, time after time, I forget, I'm going to tell y'all, like, that moment you find out you have herpes, you are the only person putting the herpes stigma on you. You have yet released it to the world, told the world, told anybody, left the building, and yet you feel the herpes stigma. You feel the herpes stigma because you once was somebody without herpes that fueled the herpes stigma. And now you have to deal with you. Mm. Then you leave and you walk out into the world and you're looking for everything that proves you right because that's how funny our subconscious works. So mm -hmm. we have to practice speaking a new narrative, feeling different, accepting your herpes. Herpes is here to stay, y'all. I don't care what cure people throw at you. You can have an outline vegan diet have all the herbs in the world and yes your herpes will disappear but what it does is it goes it goes to sleep y'all it lies dormant in your body it doesn't go away you can still you can test the false negative with your diet but the minute you slip off track the minute you come off of those herbs the minute you want a bag of doritos or some sweets baby your herpes will show up so don't get scammed by them scammers do the education, get the body journal and workshop, go sign up for the herpes remedies and diet workshops. We'll teach you how to put your herpes to sleep, but we're not going to tell you no cure. We're not going to give you no gimmicks. We're not going to tell you we're going to cure you. You go get tested. You get a test negative and now you think you herpes free, but you still having prodrome symptoms. We need that. We need a whole conversation Ooh. just about the scammers out here. There's so many people. Yeah, we do. Thing. There's so many people benefiting off of the fact that you haven't accepted your herpes, that you yeah. would do anything to get rid of it. You put yourself in this never-ending cycle. It's like a tunnel. And you're falling. You keep falling. You keep falling. You're searching for cures. You're searching for this. How do I disclose? How does it get better? How does it feel? Baby, change your narrative. 
show up for you, love on you, take a step from relationships. Why do I want to be wanted so much? Why do I need to be in a relationship? Why do I feel like a relationship is so necessary? Why am I not enough for myself? Become enough for mm. yourself. Mm. And become enough for yourself. We need that on a shirt. Um, Z said, I got my book. Thank you, Queen, so much for supporting. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Daisy said, I just shared again. I'm going to get me a shirt today. So we have merch. So we appreciate that. We have Tony. Tony says, am I the only man in here? I feel like men are less willing to have this conversation. I'm in my early 20s and I've never asked a female to get tested. I ain't never asked a, a man to get tested and I was in my mid 30s. So Tony, you are... Um, I feel like your career, I don't know. I feel like the stigma says men are less willing, but are they less willing? I mean, I don't, I, don't, I really don't know because I didn't have a conversation. I just had a, I read a stat somewhere. Oh, I don't know where I read that stat at. And usually most men, their first time getting tested is when the women ask them. Mm. Y'all hear that? That's you know how many people tell me you don't look like you have herpes? People really <laughs> the thing, y'all. <laughs> people really people say, say that. <laughs> and believe that. I'm trying to let y'all, I'm trying to put y'all game. Y'all need to be requiring STD results. People literally don't know it's not included. Y'all need to be seeing their STD results. If you don't feel comfortable asking somebody to see their STD results, why are you intimate with that person? That makes no sense. That's, don't do that. Don't do that. This is your temple. This is you. This is why do people feel like you got to? Why do people feel like you got to be in a serious, committed relationship or like being in a relationship or trending towards a relationship to ask to see somebody's papers? Like, even if you want this to be a casual hookup, even if you want to be sleeping with multiple people, you still need to know the statuses of the people that you're sleeping with and they need to know theirs. You can be having multiple sexual partners, do you? But you still can need to be able to say, I've seen her papers, I've seen her papers, I've seen his papers, I've seen his papers. Like, you don't have to reserve testing for a serious committed relationship. Y'all just want to have a fling or do whatever y'all do, but y'all still need to be doing that prior to having sex. I feel like that needs to be stigmatized as well. People are like, oh, it's just casual. We ain't together, but y'all are having sex though. So you need to know the status of the person you're having sex with, regardless of what it is or what y'all calling it or not calling it. Yeah. I honestly, I feel, oh, go ahead. I feel go ahead. more safe with a person living with a lifelong STD that's open about their status than I do from a person that has chlamydia. And, and let, me, let me tell you, tell you why. Um, chlamydia is curable. Right? I've had chlamydia in the past and I know my ways when I got chlamydia, <laughs> okay? Usually people getting chlamydia and gonorrhea and all those curable STDs are the ones that are not aware of their status. The ones who are not requiring to see STD results from everybody. The ones who are not protecting themselves, the ones who think I'm gonna have raw sex because the vibe is cool. I'm gonna have raw sex because she don't look like she got anything. She look clean. Those are the irresponsible people, the, the dirty people that we label life people with lifelong STDs. Mostly, most of the time that person with a lifelong STD, they got tested, that's why they know, number one. <laughs> Too, they they're going, they, they going in some form of the right direction. They know their virus. They probably know how to take care of themselves. I'm not speaking for all because some people are out here living with lifelong STDs and they don't give a fuck, unfortunately. And they're just as bad as the people out here having irresponsible sex, not giving a fuck to require to see STD results. Everyone falls in that same category. But I'm just tired of just stigmatizing one person and not everybody. We're not just gonna put the weight on people living with lifelong viruses. We need to put the weight on everybody. You don't want an STD, stop having sex because you trust the vibe. Required to see STD results, point blank period. 
and have scheduled routine testing. Repeat, repeat, repeat. I'm going to keep saying this. Shh. It's time to change. It's time to do something different. It's time to talk about sex. It's time to talk about STDs. Let's normalize STDs so that we can talk about STDs, so that we can learn about STDs, so that we can stop being scared about it because we're having sex, right? STDs, and yes. sex, they're one and the same. There's more people in this world with STDs than there is without. Let's just be real. And yet we still don't hear about this community of people living with STDs. It's time to talk about it. It's time to stop making this topic taboo. If we can praise raw sex, I had sex with a B, blah, 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 after raw and hit a girlfriend up. You know, all of that shit, we can rap about that irresponsible stuff. Yeah. We need to take some of the shame back from the people living with lifelong viruses. Because we're promoting, yeah. we're promoting raw sex and not talking about what can happen after you have raw sex. And it's whack. Yeah. Woo! I had to take a deep breath. And just as I took a deep breath, I saw in the comments, Diamond said, woo, y'all speaking today. <laughs> hey, Queen, <laughs> thank you so much. I had a deep breath on that. Daisy says, I have a question about seeing them. My doctor said they only call if something was positive and nothing, and nothing was, so no call. Should I expect papers to come or do I need to request them? You need to ask your doctor, how can I see my results? They usually have, yeah. okay. um, with my primary, they put it online. I have a whole, I can log in and see all my lab results. So I'm pretty sure there's a way you can do that too. You just gotta ask your doctor, how do I do that? Don't just trust your doctor saying you're good because sometimes they might say you're good to the two things they tested you for. And you thinking they tested you for everything. A standard yeah. D panel is usually chlamydia, gonorrhea. You got to get some blood drawn for um, HIV. Um, they're usually just taking your urine. If they do a pap smear, that's HPV. But hep hepatitis is usually not included. Syphilis is not included. HIV is not included. Yeah. Both types of the herpes aren't included. Most of the time, trick, and, trick ain't included unless you're showing symptoms for trick. There's so many other STDs that are not included on your standard STD panel. And when you're getting that, uh, you're good from the doctor, they're probably just giving you that you're good from your chlamydia and your gonorrhea. And that's enough for you to walk away. No. Hey, doc, show me my results. Explain to me my results. What did you test? What's this mean? What's this test for? Yeah. I bet you y'all can't even show me on your results to know if you have herpes or not. And yet you, Girl. you ain't got no herpes. No, pick up your results, learn it. See what the doctors are seeing. See what the doctors are reading. What is IgG? Yeah. What you test me that for? What's that for? What is that antibody? Ask the questions. If you don't know, ask a question. You have yeah. to know what you're being tested for, y'all. Before, especially yes. before having sex. It's yes. Huge. Sex can be life-threatening. You can't just yeah. be trusting the vibes, y'all. Sometimes you can have chlamydia and show no symptoms. You be in a whole relationship because you trust the vibes and you trust that man and you trust that woman had chlamydia all the time, messed up your whole reproductive system. Now you can't have kids. Is that real? Is that real? I was in a relationship trusting the vibes with a guy. <clears throat> got my went, went to get tested, expected to say I had nothing. They called me back and told me I had chlamydia. I called my boyfriend. I was like, I have chlamydia. He was like, oh, yeah, I have had it before. Uh, I don't I don't remember if I ever like took anything for it. I was just like, what? <laughs> like, but I never <laughs> but I never asked him, like, did he have chlamydia at the start of our relationship? I never asked him. Let me see your STD check test before STD results before we slept together, before I agreed to be his girlfriend, before we were having unprotected sex in this monogamous committed relationship but yeah I went into a relationship with somebody who had an STD and I didn't even know about it and he and I didn't find out until I went to the gynecologist and I got tested which I do fairly routinely which is why I found out but he hadn't been he didn't know he I mean how long had I been having it and what effects is this doing causing on my body but I had no idea because when you have sex you are taking a risk 
that's what we need to, we need to realize about sex. Yes, it's so normalized to just be getting it in with everybody, it, everybody out here, but you're taking some form of risk. And if it's a risk that you would like to take, make it the most calculated risk as possible and have the information that you need. So after the fact, you ain't looking up crazy like this person gave me something. Yeah, but you would have known that had y'all had that conversation prior to. Here's the thing. I don't want to say every time you have sex, you're taking a risk. Every time you have sex without having a necessary conversation and setting boundaries for yourself and setting intentions, you are taking a risk. Yes. You set boundaries and you do have the required conversation you're supposed to have and your sexual health is important to you, you're making an informed decision. Yes. Yes, I love that. And <laughs> let's talk about let's, let's let's get into sex a little bit more now, right? Okay, we here. Yes, we here on Healing Wednesdays. Let's go. We here on Healing Wednesdays, and we talking about STD contraction laws and sex. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, we get my thought back. We get refocused. Sorry. Because um, I had my thought and then I lost it. I don't like when my brain does that, y'all. This is why you, you said, let's talk about sex a little bit more. Well, Garrett, let your thought marinate back to you. Um, but hey, y'all, it's mm-hmm. Healing Wednesdays. You guys are watching us. We're so grateful. Let us know where you're watching from. Y'all are very active in the chat. So we appreciate y'all. How do y'all feel? We want to hear your input on this we cannot do this by ourselves we need to know what you're really thinking how you're really feeling so we can understand you know we've all been there I I I didn't feel like I feel now five six months ago a year ago like it's a process of really just continuously working on myself working through the things I've been telling myself my own limiting beliefs on why my life is the way it is in all areas, herpes literally opened the door for me to address everything. While I was addressing my, the stigma and the pain in my herpes, I was also addressing my, my irresponsible decisions. I was also addressing the fact that my life was a certain way because I kept telling myself certain things. I, also, I had to really do that reflection. And so that's what herpes actually caused me to do. Tony says, since I'm having herpes. Okay. <laughs> What's Tony said? Um. Tony said, since having herpes, I've been taking my responsibility and disclosing my status. I've had backlash for telling potential partners. How do you deal with the backlash? That's a great question. He's getting backlash for telling people that he has herpes as a man out here telling women that he's potentially going to sleep with, that he has herpes. I don't think it's how do you deal with the backlash as a 21 year old man? It's not backlash, my love. It's people that ain't for you, point blank, period. Herpes had herpes will tell you who's for you and who's not for you. Point. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's how I answer that, Amber. Like, um, I know, like, being twenty one is probably the game is probably different. We need Pamela in the comments because she said <laughs> we need we need our young cousins, younger cousins, to tap in. But because I know it's a whole different way at this point. However, you just have to look at it as like Shayna said, you literally get to see who's for you and who you, who's not for you at just at such a younger age. I didn't get diagnosed with herpes. So I was 32. So I lived all of my 20s out here giving my time and attention to all types of the wrong people because I was seeking something, to be honest, whether it was acceptance, validation, what, what love, whatever I was seeking, I was seeking it from others. But herpes made like Shayna said why am I so concerned with getting that even if it is just a sexual thing but still what am I what void am I feeling trying to have these all this sexual encounters or get fulfill my time in that space why am I what is going on with me so herpes allowed me to do that work and allowed me to see if somebody does not want to be with me because of my herpes or they feel some type of way or they look at me sideways all right deuces next literally i don't have to talk to you anymore because i know we're no longer in the same on the same way whether it's a casual fling or a serious relationship if you can't if you are giving me backlash for me telling you about my herpes then it's just a matter of time before you end up with it at this rate <laughs> i mean yeah 
Listen, that goes right into what I needed to say too. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> Required to see somebody's STD results, their sexual health history. Oh, you can learn a lot about a person and how they show them. <clears throat> Let me see your sexual health history before you have sex with me. They probably don't even have a sexual health history. <laughs> the first time they probably been tested, you're going to see. They probably did it real recently so that they can show you something. And the test before that is probably going to be from like 2016. Who knows? <laughs> you won't have people who got, who gets routine testing. Like that's their life. That's a part of their life. You're going to see people like that. And then you're going to see people who are scattered. And then you're going to see people who ain't never had a test before. You gonna learn a lot about your partner. Stuff you wish you would have known five years down the line about your partner, you could learn right then and there. Yes, they are. Yes, but sexual health history. Yes. Oh, baby, you don't get tested. It's me, I'm the first time that you want to get tested. We definitely doing routine testing if we're gonna continue this <laughs> relationship because you just out here. <laughs> You've been having sex for how many years and you ain't ever got. Tested. Uh, so you got two years, two years in between. Why you got two years in between your STD results? Oh, that's because <laughs> of the relationship. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> listen, listen, y'all play, y'all play. <laughs> Get an STD in a relationship, y'all. It doesn't mm. happen. Every day, be way too often. I don't care okay. how much you trust your partner. It happens way too often. And don't be don't, don't let it be a sleeping virus like herpes. Because herpes is known mm-hmm. to be the sleeping virus. It will go to sleep and you will test negative for it. And it will pop up in your relationship, your 10-year-long relationship. Find out you had herpes for 15 years. It's just been dormant. Then you divorce your husband and your wife because you think they gave it to you. Mm, mm, mm. Just Come on now. Just All right. Lauren's in the comments. She said, when I first got diagnosed, the guy I slept with, I told him and immediately told him to get tested. I asked him what his doctor said. And he said that the doctor just checked around his scrotum and that was it. I honestly want to tell him to get tested again because I don't and still don't feel like that was the ac- that was accurate enough. Or maybe he lied. Those thoughts still play in my mind, but I blocked him. But you can't just go off of what people are telling you. That's what yeah. we're trying to say. You have to yeah. require to see their STD results. Stop yeah. doing it. If yeah. you to enter inside of your body or if you want to enter in somebody else's body, show me the Carfax, please. Yeah. I need to see it. There's this app called the Safely app where you can upload your sexual health history they will verify your doctor and then anyone who requests to see it, you can give them access to your sexual health history. For those of you who want to hook up and don't think it's possible to, to safely hook up, it's the Safely app. Go ahead and download it. Um, I think that I feel like so many. I feel like so many people are out here like just saying I don't got nothing and people are set, like taking that word or it's like, go get tested. I did. What did they say? They say I'm fine. But like, where are your results at though? Like I, I, I believe of none of what I hear and only half of what I see. I can do that y'all. Mm. All them people who say I don't look like I got herpes. All those people who say I'm, I look clean. You fine. Damn girl. What's your- <laughs> hookups. Oh, I can say I'm clean. And have sex. <laughs> it's that easy, y'all. Require to see STD results. My <laughs> point is being made right now. <laughs> it can happen. So require to see STD results. It's so very necessary. It's so very necessary. It stop. We got to stop the blame game. Stop mm-hmm. relying on people living with lifelong viruses to tell you about their sexual health history. Ask them. Ask yes, they need to tell you. I'm not saying they don't need to tell you because just as much as they're supposed to have the sex talk, you're supposed to have the sex talk. Both parties. There we go. Both. It's parties. empowering. It's empowering. It's liberating. It's so amazing. Like to be the first person that might be, you might be dating. Somebody could be out here for years. You know, like in Tony's instance, he's only 21. But shoot, 
I never asked nobody to see their stuff. I never had the conversation. I was in my thirties. So to think that you could be the person that introduces a person to something different, like, okay, we're going to talk about our sexual health. That's impactful. Whether you are with it, whether y'all end up being together or not, best believe you're going to sow a seed in their mind somewhere where they're going to be like, the next time they just out here wilding, it's going, they're going to be like, oh, like she didn't ask me to see my papers and I'm glad because I've been tested in years anyway, but I remember when I was in a so-and-so and they asked to see my papers and even though that kind of trick made me feel some type of way, I looked at them like they was crazy. Like that's actually what's up though, because that's what we should be doing. Literally Diamond says, that's what happened with me. I asked him to see his papers and he lied multiple times about his status. Lauren says, exactly. I kept asking to see the paperwork and he would not show it to me. If but somebody won't show you their sex. paperwork. Mm. But did you, you still have sex? But did Ooh. you have sex? You just asked them and then they I'm told you, the back oh, of my head I'm not going to show you or they kept ignoring <laughs> the fact that you asked them and get you still <laughs> had sex. <laughs> 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 It was me. I, I I I didn't even ask to see the paperwork, and I was having sex. But I we ain't judging y'all. I was judging them too. <laughs> well, I got her judging. <laughs> I'm trying me to tell too. you. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't judging y'all. We ain't trying to make y'all feel like shit. We ain't trying to tell you. We ain't trying to take y'all nowhere that we ain't never been ourselves. We're just trying to say we're doing the real work. And this is what happens when you do the real work. You got to call your own self out. You got to call your own shit out. And you got to be willing to say, he didn't show me his paperwork. I asked for him, but I still got on my back though. But that was my bad. And here's why I won't ever do it again. Because like, you know what I'm saying? Let that lesson, learn the lesson from the encounter. And don't just look at it as I'm going to be resentful, mad, pissed, annoyed, F him. It's going to be like, yeah. It, it was what it was. There was uh, accountable actions from both parties that needed to be done. So I'm going to set mine and I'm going to take mine and I'm going to push forward. Like that's the mentality you got to have about it. Cause baby. Can we address the, the, the post I made the other day responding to a comment and um, the guy goes, what do you think he said? Just how open you are about it open you are about it is scary for me i'm not judging you i just now understood i'm really not ready for 2021 this man is afraid about people being open about their status people feel mm. that way y'all that's a yeah. red flag too people really feel that way people are more scared of people who are open about their status Versus people who don't even have the sex talk conversation in the first place. That's ridiculous to me. If you're not having the sex talk conversation and not requiring to see STD results, you are the most dangerous person to have sex with. Point blank, period. Not the person who knows their status and is open about it and wants to tell you and talk about it and educate you. No. That person who who too scared to have the sex talk conversation, who too scared to require to see STT, STD results and still have sex based off the vibes. And then when they do get an STD result, they blame the person for giving it to them. Those are the mm. people you need to be scared of. Woo, woo big energy. Cause what you scared, are you scared of me? No, feeling comfortable about my status? Are you scared because you got some things that can never see the light of day that you would never feel comfortable with anybody knowing and you feel threatened by the fact that I don't, I'm not living at that level anymore. Like you make people look at themselves different when you start to carry yourself different. It's going, it's going to be felt by those around you. And it's also going to be felt by strangers, by people who are just going to see you and judge you and talk shit about you because of what you're doing, because they so miserable in their reality that all that they can do is talk about something that's unfamiliar to them, which is self-love, which is acceptance, which is awareness, that growth sh that we doing, they can't relate to that. So all they can stay is stuck in this mindset of ignorance. And ignorance is bliss to people who don't know no better. But once you know better, you're charged with responsibility of doing better. G Alexandra says, cuz love seeing you do your thing. Love you, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I was like, Shane, I know she's talking to you, but she's my cousin too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cousin. 
Kwana says, say that. Diamond says, yes, she still has sex with him like a dummy. I'm not like a dummy, just like like a human. Like a human. If you got her, you're human. If you got HIV, you're human. Because everybody out here doing it, everybody out here having irresponsible sex. You just was the one who got the one the STD that you can't get rid of. Boo hoo. That's it. That's it. Mind you, the the STDs that you can get rid of are way more harmful than all of the STDs that you live with. Let me throw that out there. Mm. The ones you can't. Mm. So it's important to schedule routine testing. It's important to require STD results and it's important to get tested, y'all. Know what's going on. Don't be the person who has the the non-symptom chlamydia and and you're living with it. The non-symptom gonorrhea, because it it happens, y'all. They don't always have symptoms. Every day. Experience symptoms. The people who get smells and the change and they discharge, they lucky because they can correct it. Yep. Everybody's getting that, y'all. Especially people with herpes. Most people with herpes don't show any symptoms than the people that do. I think it's like 10 to 15% of people with herpes show symptoms. 85% of people with herpes don't know they have herpes. Why? Because they don't show symptoms or their symptoms are too mild that they don't ever associate them with herpes. Down to this damn COVID vaccine. COVID vaccine is giving people herpes. No, it's not. It's triggering people's herpes. People who live with sleeping, that sleeping virus for years, they're getting the, the vaccine. Their body is undergoing this war with itself. It's trying to get rid of the vaccine. It's trying to take care of everything else. And then you have a herpes outbreak. It's awoke. It's alive. It's thriving. And then you feel like a COVID shot gave you herpes. No bullshit. You've been had herpes. You just didn't know that and it triggered an outbreak. I know when I had chlamydia, I didn't have no symptoms. And so when the doctor called me, I was like, what? Like my, I wasn't going there because I had any uh, outrageous symptoms. And my let, test me, I was literally going there for maybe my routine checkup and I got tested. And that's when they called me. So when, so when she says you could literally not know, you could literally not know. I didn't know I had herpes until I went to the gynecologist and said, test me for everything. And I didn't even realize that when I said everything, that's when herpes got included because it's normally not included. She, I think she was like, do you want the regular test or do you want the test for everything? I think she said that. And I was just like, test me for everything. Just so test me for everything. Didn't even know what I was saying back then. Huh? You go to your doctor now and say, test me for everything. Ask your doctor, what does everything mean? What is everything? What is even everything? Do you even know all the STDs you can get? Not only I mean, can you get STDs from sex, you can get bacteria, you can get parasites. There's so much more shit you can get from sex. Yes. That's why it's so necessary to have these conversations, y'all. It's so necessary yes. to know what safe sex is. Safe sex is not just condoms. Yes. Safe sex is not just birth control, y'all. Safe sex is communication. Yes. Say sex is foreplay. Yes. Say sex is again communication. Communication. All fronts, not just STD. Your STD conversation does not start, does not stop the day you have it. It's continuous. It's yes. babe, I need you to get me ready before we have sex. Babe, I'm not ready. Babe, this hurts. Babe, I don't like when we do this and this and that. Babe, I don't want to do it. This is all a part of safe sex. Yes. Yes. I don't want you, I don't want you going down on me, then going to it, toss my salad, then coming back down on me. I'm gonna get BV like that, babe. Babe, I need you to wash your fingers before you fingering me. I need you to go take a bath and wash them balls before you decide to have sex with me all this conversation <laughs> needs to happen y'all this is all of safe sex you suffering with back-to-back bv you done changed your diet up right to, so that you won't suffer from back-to-back bv but now you got a new partner and you don't know why you keep getting back-to-back bv it could be your sexual health your practices 
you might be the nastiest of all nastiest and you're doing this and this and this and this and that. And that's why you get in DV because you're not doing it right. You're not having the conversations. You just winging it. A lot of us do that in our 20s because we don't have these conversations with the adults. It's necessary. It's time. Sit your kids down. It's time to talk. I don't, they shouldn't be winging it, learning how to take care of their vaginas. They shouldn't mm. be winging it, learning how to have sexual, um, healthy sexual communication. They shouldn't be winging it, going into sex. Your kids need to be informed. You need to talk about yes. it. You don't need to be taboo. Y'all have to be comfortable. I want my son, I want my grandkids to be comfortable to tell me about their sexual experiences if they have to. Hey, mom, da, yes. da, 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 the girl did this and this and that. And I, blah, 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 blah. I want him to be comfortable to have that conversation with me. I don't want him yes. to be, oh, I can't talk about that with my mom. That's weird. No, that, that. We yes. have said that mindset. That's how yes. we protect our kids. That's how we change the narrative around sex. That's where they learn it from. They're, he's supposed to learn from you and, and the, and the, attitude and mindset you have around it is going to have a direct impact on his attitude and how he has around it. If he feels the, the energy, she don't even have to say anything, but if he feels the energy of like shame and secrecy coming from her when she's talking to him about sex, he's going to take that on in himself and make it seem like, oh, this is a conversation I can't, I can't be open and comfortable with having with someone like my mom. Like that is so big shame. Like that's generational curse breaker right there. Oh. Lauren's in the comments feeling everything we're saying. She said, man, what's when you talk, probably talking about washing them balls. Tony said, I'm talking about my early 20s. I'm 28 now. You're absolutely right. Herpes taught me who out. Herpes taught me who was for me. Herpes changed my mindset completely. I'm happily married now. My wife knew my status from the beginning and still decided to love me for it. Herpes low key helped me find unconditional love. My wife still doesn't have herpes. We're being safe. My wife and I just had a handsome baby boy two months ago. I hope everyone's story could end as happy as mine. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Tony, thank you so much for sharing that, for being a cousin, a part of our community. That was beautiful. Thank you for the life lessons for sure. And that's what it is. I mean, herpes saved my life. I didn't, I didn't make that the title of my video because it sounded good. I made it the title of my YouTube video because herpes really did save my life at a time in my life where I was lost. I was super insecure, low key. I had everything I was supposed to have on the outside, the job, the money, the looks, the, this, the, that, but I, on the inside, I was empty on the inside. I was seeking on the inside. I wanted to be loved because I really didn't love myself. I just loved what people said about me. But when enough people wasn't saying that about me, I was unsure of me. Herpes literally allowed me to look in that mirror and fall in love with me on the inside and on the outside. And that has changed. I, I now give myself, like Tony said, it helped him find unconditional love. It helped me unconditionally love myself. So unconditional love could find me and those who are for me could come to me. A lot of people who ain't for me have since tried to come for me too, because when you start loving you, that's addictive. That's attractive. People's going to turn their heads and see who, it, who you are. Like, who got the nerve to love themselves? It's going to turn some people off, but it's going to turn some people on. But you're going to get the opportunity to be able to discern who's truly meant to come to you because you know you, you stand up for you, you show up for you, and then that's what you require from others in your life. And that changes the relationships you have with people. Woo, we've been on here for hours. Time to go. Man. <laughs> Today was lit. It was. It was. It's good content. Let's go. Y'all held us down today on Facebook. Thank y'all cousins for being here. We appreciate y'all tapping in, sharing, getting in the comments. We're going to be over on Instagram tonight at 7 p.m. having a conversation again all about healing, safe sex. Wednesdays is for healing. So we're going to be having that on Instagram live. So make sure y'all tap back in with us tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank y'all for being here. Make sure y'all check out everything we have on www.herpescanever.com. We, we have the replay available for our disclosure workshop we did. So if you're still in that space of wanting to get comfortable with disclosure, we drop all the jewels in that. The replay is available. We have an upcoming workshop talking about herpes remedies, herpes diet and remedies. That's still available. We're doing that in a few weeks, um, next weekend, actually. So you still have time to get that. And of course, our book, our journal that we have, 
that we're going to start working through together with our Patreons. We're going to let everybody get the book all month of May. We're going to be coming into our Facebook group, talking about our journal, going over some entries. So we're doing the work. We're showing up. We're so happy that you're showing up for yourself. You're showing up to do the work with us. And that's why we will break the stigma in our lifetime because herpes can never. This is your uh, big cousin, Amber, signing off, saying thank you so much for being here. And I'm going to let Shana say her, her goodbyes. Listen, y'all. Feeling depressed? You feeling like your life has ruined? If you're feeling unworthy, undeserving of love, if you feeling like herpes has changed your life for the worse i'm here to tell you that it's not your herpes and that herpes can never look at me and look at amber herpes <laughs> saved our life amber's voice herpes put me on a path to self-discovery herpes showed me all the areas where i lack self-love herpes forced me to learn my body herpes taught me how to put this pussy on a pedestal and because of herpes i know that having me is a big flex so once again herpes could we love you and we'll see you guys later peace okay <laughs>